Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I try out a different version of the Space Shuttle than I tried out in previous videos. This is the one by Space Audi or Space ODY. It is a different derivative of the Dylan Sembro slash Radar slash DeckQ slash Mike NZ slash Radar, uh, whoever else, I think I said Radar twice, uh, the, the long running shuttle thing. And so there's one that is said to be compatible with KSP 1.12, but as you saw me pointing out there, uh, it didn't have the super lightweight tank, and it has other oddities about it, like by default, it didn't actually have the right food, water, and oxygen. Now, there was an attempt by the configurations, by the life support configuration, to put the right food, water, and oxygen, but it didn't take because of the priorities of module manager. Basically, um, the original configuration overwrote the attempted modified configuration for the life support, so it didn't work out. So I fixed that by just putting the correct life support in the original uh, realism overhaul configuration for the part, and we proceed from there. So this has the right amount, and this is my regular launch script. You can see the plumes are somewhat different from the ones I had in for the version that I ported from 1.8.1. Uh, so all the configurations otherwise except for the life support life support fix are from Space Audi and so I'm just using what was given instead of what I myself sort of modified from the 1.8.1 version. So that's all set aside. So I'm not entirely sure I like the waterfall plumes on this. I sort of prefer the ones I did. But anyway, uh, we will just uh, go with it. I do like the external tank texture which I think has been improved. And I think there are even higher definition textures available in the package, but I didn't put those in. So here we go. The, uh, the launch script worked just fine. In fact, if you have a previous version of this shuttle put together, it'll still work. Um, the part names are the same because it's just a derivative. It's just improved upon to make it compatible with 1.12 or anything from 1.8.1 to 1.12. Now, I'm not thrilled with the AG-10 plumes or the RCS plumes. I do prefer the real plumes for those. I, this flickering mesh thing just doesn't work for me, but that's my own taste. But here we have the use of fuel. I'm just basically wasting fuel. I, uh, simulating getting to the ISS and coming back down, basically. We have a space lab in the cargo bay right now. So, I think this is the one that people said was far compatible. It definitely has far modules on the wings and everything. However, it's a little bit weird in that it has the far module, but it doesn't have the far stuff in the context menu in the VAB, like the mass strength and stuff like that. So I don't know how that works out. Um, I think it must have the far modules on it, but um, it just doesn't have the same readouts that I normally get when I put the far module on. So. Anyway, we will see how it operates in re-entry, which is what we're mostly interested in because the 1.8.1 shuttle that I tested out exploded during re-entry, and so that wasn't any good. And so this one is supposed to be able to survive. I did note that it has higher heat tolerance on all the parts, so that, that, that would automatically help. But there is another factor, and we will soon see that. So this is the end of the retro burn. Everything is under the control of my regular re-entry script. I might try out uh, one of those other re-entry scripts that I've seen floating around, uh, though for now I should at least fix this one first for 1.12. And I'll try to fix it for this shuttle as it is, so that if you download this shuttle, then it'll work with this one. That'll be the simplest one. And the version of this, and again I'm going to link it in the video description, is 1.7 right now. And yeah, it definitely acts differently than the shuttle I had before. In particular, it gets way more drag, and we'll soon see that. I'll show its progress um, throughout this in chunks of basically 20 kilometers altitude. And you'll note that target pitch in the KOS window, the script that's controlling the re-entry, is 37. That means that it's feeling that it's falling short. And Pitching down is a good way of fixing that, or at least the only way of fixing that. You can't do S turns to increase uh, your lift. So we are at 37 degrees, and I wanted to rebalance it a little bit because it's using pitch in a certain direction. It's actually not properly balanced right now. I might tweak some things about this shuttle to get it to use a little bit less fuel because it's trying to keep its nose in a position 
and it should be neutral right now. But yeah, it's getting a lot more drag, uh, surprisingly more drag, I would say. But, you know, uh, I'll just work with that as far as modifying the script is concerned, as long as it seems like it can come to a controlled stop and it doesn't explode, right? I mean, certain basics. But yeah, we're falling short by a substantial distance. We are still over the Pacific. We haven't even... This was on an ISS path, and that would cross Central America and cross Cuba up to Florida. And we have not actually hit Central America yet. So we are splashing down into the Pacific, which is ways away, like 3,000 kilometers or so. So... The easiest way to fix that in the reentry script is to just have the retro burn later, right? We just do the retro burn 3,000 kilometers later, and then it'll end up in the right place, which is the sort of lazy way of doing it. But it is a way of doing it if we believe that this is how it's going to go. So actually, it came to a much slower speed when it started to pitch down, and I was a little bit worried we would lose control, but basically stall out. Uh, but it did hold control there. But we've basically used all of our fuel, or at least all of the indicated delta V. There's actually a little bit more fuel on the nose in the nose. But yeah, uh, overall it had a lot of drag, and maybe that's okay. But it was a little bit surprising. So here we go. We are trying to land, knowing that we got a lot of drag. I was wondering what our splashdown speed would be. So. Here it's wiggling a lot because we're on SAS. The previous version of the shuttle that I imported from 1.8.1 did not like atmospheric autopilot. The atmospheric autopilot is much better for this sort of thing, and this version does like atmospheric autopilot. So we can use atmospheric autopilot with it, and it certainly has a better, uh, better balance. That's fly-by-wire is acting normally. So I am able to glide it down at a pretty constant speed, which is good. Yeah, very, very stable. It's not like I'm doing huge turns with it at this point. And we didn't do any S turns because we were falling short, so that would have been interesting to see how well it would do that. But the way that it seemed to be using some pitch makes me think that we would be running out of RCS like that unless I move the center of mass a little bit. So here we are. I'm just trying to kill speed here, but we have to sort of feel out when it's killed enough speed. And here I'm keeping the nose up pretty high, so it's not going to be able to keep this up for very long. So our touchdown splashdown speed is higher than the shuttle's actual landing speed, which is about 90 meters per second, which is, yeah, ooh, which is close to 200 miles an hour. So we would like to see that happen at 90 meters per second, but it was higher than that indicating that the shuttle is uh, not isn't getting as much lift as it ought to. So it has the far modules on, but maybe some numbers need to be tweaked. Uh, we'll see. But for now, since this survived and didn't explode, you know, no overheating or anything like that, we'll run with it. I'll just run with it for now. And so I'll tweak the reentry script based on it, and we'll see what it can do. I would like to restore the super lightweight tank to the external tank though. There's no reason that should not be there. And so, yeah, I'll try and see what I can do about that. But some mild success on the shuttle front in KSP 1.12. And with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.